Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a long time since I made a design coding video on this channel. In today's video, we are going to try to recreate the design in Flutter. I will put a link to the design in the description below. I have already gone ahead and created a starter project to save us some time. So here we have our asset images and here the two pages that we are going to create. Here in the main that dart, we have the main method that calls this class, which returns the material app. Inside the material app, we called the team folder page, which is this page. Again, here we have a stateful widget with an empty scaffold. This is why we have a blank page here. Now let's start with the implementation of this first page of the design. So let's come here and start by adding a background color to the scaffold. Then for the body of the scaffold, we will add a column that we will use to lay out the main sections of the page. The first thing inside this column will be a container for this header section of the page. Let's give it a height of 170 and also use the decoration property of the container to set the background color. Now, as a child for this container, we will add a row. We will use this row to organize those two groups of widgets. The first one will be a column of two text widgets and the second one will be a row of two custom widgets that we will be creating. The two text widgets are pretty straightforward, so let's quickly create them inside the column. As you can see, the text widgets are not positioned correctly. To fix that, let's add some paddings to the container. Then another issue is that the column by default takes the maximum available space on its main axis. To fix that, let's set the main axis size property of the column to main axis size mean. Then finally, we will set the alignment of the item inside the container to alignment bottom center. Now for those buttons, we will use a combination of a container and an icon button to create them. For that, let's go down to this row that we created earlier and start by adding a container. Then as a child, we will give it an icon button. Now let's use the decoration property of the container to give it a background color. Colors black with opacity 10%. Also, let's give it some rounded corners using the border reduce property. Let's make the icon bigger and also give it a white color. Now, to create the second button, we just need to copy and paste this custom widget and replace the search icon with a notification icon. Now, to add some space between the two buttons, we could use the margin property of the container or use the size box widget. I'll go with the size box widget this time. Since we are inside a row, we will use the width property of the size box and set it to 10. Now, to create some space between the two groups of widgets, we will use the main axis alignment of the main row at the top and set it to main axis alignment space between. Before we move to the next section, let's quickly fix this issue here with the alignment of the text widgets. They are aligned to the left. So, to fix that, we will use the cross axis alignment property of the column and set it to cross axis alignment start. I think we are done with the header of the page. Now, let's move to the storage info section. For that, let's go down here under the container and add a row. And inside this row, we will add a rich text widget followed by a sample text widget. We could also use two text widgets instead of a rich text widget. But this will then require us to use a row to place them. The main advantage of the which text widget is that it allows you to have unique text styles for different blocks of text called text span. Let's add the first text span with its own text style. And now the second text span with a different text style. And finally, the sample text widget for the upgrade text. As expected, we now need to add some space between the two widgets. For that, we will come here in the row and set the main axis alignment to space between. The row is too close to the header. So let's use the size box widget and its height property to create some space between the header and the row. And finally, we need to add some paddings around the row. Since we only need paddings on the horizontal axis, we will use edge and set symmetric horizontal. 
Before we move to the second part of this section, let's quickly add some white space using the size box widget. Let's paste it after the padding here. Now to create this visual, we will consider it as a row of multiple columns and each column will contain a container and a text widget. So we will come here, create the row and inside it, add the first column. Let's add the container, give it a width, a height and a color. Now let's create the text widget below the container. The container is too close to the text widget, so let's add some white space using the size box widget. Also, they are aligned to the left, so let's fix that using the cross axis alignment property of the column and set it to cross axis alignment start. And again, we need to add some horizontal padding. Now we are done with the first column, we could just copy and paste it many times to create the other one. But to better organize the code, let's extract it in a method. Let's call it build file size chart. Now let's add some parameters for the values that will be different in each column. A string for the title, a color for the color of the container, and a double for the width of the container. Now we can come here, add some values for those parameters, and also duplicate this line many times. We have this issue here because we are using a fixed width for the containers instead of a dynamic one, which should be a percentage of the total screen. So to fix that, let's go to the top and create a variable called available screen width and use the media query of context size width to get the size of the screen and then minus 50 to remove the horizontal padding. Now we can come here and replace the fixed width by the available screen width multiplied by the width argument, which will be a fraction of the total. Let's rename this to width percentage. Now to create some space between the columns, let's go to the row and add a size box between the methods. Since we are inside the row, we will use the width of the size box. Now the only thing that is left to do is to pass the correct values to the methods. If you like this video so far, a free way to support the channel is to give us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Before moving to the next section, let's add this line here using the divider widget. Before creating this section, I will assume that the rest of the page is scrollable. So for that, I will come here under the divider inside the column and add a list view widget. Since we are adding a list view inside the column, we need to wrap it with an expanded widget. The first thing inside the list view will be a text widget for the recently updated text. Let's quickly add it. As usual, a size box to create some white space. And we need some horizontal padding. And this time, we will use the padding property of the list view to add it once and for all for the rest of the page. Now for those three items, we will use the same approach that we used earlier which is a row of multiple columns. And inside each column, we will have a container with an image inside and a which text below the container. So inside the row here, we will add a column and inside the column, a container. As a child for the container, we will use the image asset to bring the image that we have in our image folder. To avoid this error, make sure that you have added your image asset in the pop spec that you have modified. The image is too big, so let's give the container a height of 110 and also set some paddings all around the image. Let's use the decoration property of the container to add this light gray color in the background. We'll also use the border radius to add some rounded corners. Now let's add the rich text widget. We use the rich text widget because it's one block of text with multiple styles. Now a size box to add some space. Now for those two, we could copy and paste, but instead, to better organize our code, we will extract it in a method. Let's call it build file column. 
And now let's add the parameters, a string for the image, another string for the file name, and one last one for the extension. Let's quickly replace them. Now that's done. As we did earlier, let's go back to the method, add those values, and duplicate the method. To fix this issue, we'll come here on the container and set the width to the available screen width multiplied by 0.31, which is almost a third of the screen width. And to create some space between the columns, we'll come here and use the size box widget and set its width to the available screen width by 0.03. Another thing that I assume here is that we will only have three items here and they are not scrollable on the horizontal axis. Otherwise, I would have put them in a list view with a scroll direction axis horizontal. Now, let's finalize this section by putting the correct values in the method. We have a divider here. Let's add it. Now, for this section, we will use a row for those two text widgets. So, we'll come here under the divider and add the row. Inside this row, we will quickly add the two text widgets. To add the space between the text widget, we will use the main axis alignment of the row and set it to space between. Now, for this list of project folders, we will again use a container. And inside this container, we'll add a main row for this icon button and this group. And then for this group, we will again use another row to lay out this icon and this text widget. But before we do that, let's come here and add some white space using the size box widget. Now, let's add the container and the main row as a child. Again, the first thing inside this row will be another row to group the icon and the folder name. Now, let's add the icon. Then, the text widget for the folder name. Now, for the icon at the right, we'll go below this row inside the main row and add an icon button. To push it to the right, let's go to the main row and set the main axis alignment to space between. Now, let's finalize the container. We will first give it an horizontal padding. Then, we'll use the decoration property, pass it a box decoration. We'll use the color property of the box decoration to give it a background color. Then, the border radius to give it some rounded corners. And, one last thing to finish it is to give it a height of 65. Now, depending on the app features, it could make more sense to extract this container in a widget. But since we are just recreating the design, I'll extract it in a method. Let's call it build project row. As always, let's create the parameters. And this time, we only have one string, the folder name. Since we are using a variable now, we need to remove the const keyword. Now, let's go up in the method and place the correct values and duplicate the method multiple times to have the different items in the list. As you can see, everything looks good, except that we are missing some space between the project folders. And to fix that, we could come here and use the size box between the methods. But since we have a container here, we will use the merging property of the container to create some space around it. And more specifically, only at the bottom of each container. Now, let's move to the creation of this custom navigation bar, which is a combination of a bottom navigation bar and a floating action button. For that, we will come here under the column that we created for the body of the scaffold and use the bottom navigation bar property of the scaffold. We'll pass it a bottom navigation bar widget, which takes a list of bottom navigation bar items. Let's create them. Even though we don't need the labels in the design, we have to add them because as you can see here, they should not be near. But fortunately, we can come here and set the show selected labels and show unselected labels to false to hide them. To be able to switch between those two buttons, we we'll need to provide a callback function to the untap property of the bottom navigation bar. This callback will receive the index of the selected button as parameter. But before we can use it inside the callback, we need to first create a state variable that will track the currently selected button. Let's call it selected index and we will give it a value of zero, which represents the index of the first button. Now we will come here. When the button is tapped, we will set state 
and set the selected index to selected index. To avoid confusions, let's rename this parameter to index. Now, one last thing to make it work is to set the current index property of the bottom navigation bar to our state variable selected index. As you can see, we can switch between the buttons now. To add this button here, we need to first add a floating action button to the scaffold. Let's do that right now. And as a child, we will pass it an icon. Now, to place it in the middle of the bottom navigation bar, we need to use the floating action button location property of the scaffold and set it to floating action button location center dot. Now, before we finish with this section, we need to add this white shadow behind the floating action button. For that, we'll come here. And since the floating action button property takes any widget, we can wrap this floating action button with a container. And then we will use this container to add a shadow behind the floating action button. To do that, we will use the decoration property of the container, which takes a box decoration. And for the shape, we will use a box shape circle. Then we will also use the box shadow property, which takes a list of box shadows. We will set the color to white, a spread radius of seven, and a blur radius of 1. I think we are done with this page. Everything is working well. Don't hesitate to add in the comment below if you see a mistake or something that you will do differently. Now to complete the design, we will need to create this second page. But I will leave it for another video. I will put the link of that video in the description below when it will be published. If you made it so far, please give us a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.